Are you thinking about living in Shoreline, Washington? What? This is my backyard. I live and went to school and grew up here in the Shoreline area of Washington, just north of downtown Seattle. And it has changed a lot over the years, but there are lots of great things about it. And there are a few like real dicey things situations, areas that I'm going to share with you just so you can have your eyes open as far as what you're going to get into if you decide to move to Shoreline, Washington. I'm a local real estate agent here. I want everybody to find their happy place when they move to the Seattle area. And so the goal of this channel is to help you find and identify a place you're going to love to live. But there's everybody has their own personality. All the little parts of towns and suburbs have their own personality. So we dive into that on the channel. If you want to shortcut the process, give me a call and just like, uh, I don't know, Dr. Fraser Crane, I'm listening. I will listen to you and help you kind of uh, parse it down a little further if you want the, the shortcut track there. So uh, that being said, let's jump in. Now, if this is the first time to visit my channel, I just want to say welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I love you already. And I would love for you to subscribe so that you don't miss different videos. Every week we try to publish a new video and we're going to be going into lots of different neighborhoods. So if you want to get a feel for how other neighborhoods compare to Shoreline, then these upcoming videos are for you as well as the other videos on my channel. And yes, I do actually get out in the car and drive you around. You can kind of see what some of the fun things to do are in the different areas. So subscribe. If you have a question, type it in. I read all the comments. If you love it, give it a thumbs up. If you hate me and you think I'm a horrible person and I'm overly cheerful, then that's fine. You can, you can give me a thumbs down. But I, I prefer this. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yes, so Shoreline, let's get you oriented. So Shoreline is kind of the first stop north on I-5 after you cross out of the city of Seattle. So for many people who don't want to live in the city limits for whatever reason, uh, typically, well, or are we going to get political right off the bat? So there's a little bit more homelessness and uh, drug use, a little bit different, you know, police enforcement, that type of thing, different school districts. So a lot of people want to come north out of the city and the um, horizontal street, <laughs> east-west street, I-5 runs north-south. So you're coming north and once you hit 145th here, boom, you're uh, scot-free, you're in Shoreline. And Shoreline does span across um, pretty much the whole area from Puget Sound, which is our salt water on the west, to Lake Washington. It actually does switch into Lake Forest Park, which is where I live. It's a little tiny township. It used to be unincorporated King County, but it all blends together. It's all urban. So just think of that area as the Shoreline area, Shoreline and Lake Forest Park here north of Seattle toward the top of Lake Washington. And uh, the zip codes, if you want to look those up, are 98133, 98155, and 98177. Okay, so in addition to I-5, which is our freeway that goes uh, from Mexico north to Canada, we have another street called Aurora Highway 99. And this is, I'm just going to tell you right away, this is one of the dicey areas in town. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and if you're driving on Aurora, you can tell when you cross 145th because that's when the prostitution starts. Yes, I am being real with you now. Um, and there have also been, uh, like my sister on Friday, she'll go out, she lives in Shoreline as well. Uh, she went out to uh, the Thai food restaurant that was in the big shopping center along with the Home Depot and the um, Costco and that type of the thing. And unfortunately, the Thai food restaurant had gotten like uh, someone came by and stole all their money basically what's that called a hold up <laughs> you know and someone came and stole their money and then I think they got away on the bus so <laughs> and it sounded like it wasn't the first time so there is a lot of bus traffic on highway 99 there are people like running across the street at night trying to like not walk down the long block to the, the light so my husband even he used to drive to work on the bus and he would be commuting in the dark he would like say you know <laughs> i couldn't see these people they were running across the street so um aurora itself is just not 
the nicest part of town. I would say it's the least nice part of Shoreline. So as you're looking at a map and you're trying to decide where to live in Shoreline, um, just remember that you want to be as many blocks off of Aurora as you can be. And uh, my sister actually lives a few blocks off Aurora toward Richmond Beach. And she finds that to be really nice. She's in one of the, you know, a neighborhood with twists and turns and hills and rivers and gullies and things like that. So once you have hills and twists and turns, it's a lot less likely that you're just going to get people wandering off of Aurora, you know, coming there to steal your packages and make trouble and that type of a thing. So actually, if you go further west from Aurora, maybe around 185th, remember Seattle stops at 145th, go north around 160th, we have Shoreline Community College, which is a big campus. Uh, they've got baseball fields and parks and things ad adjacent to that. They put on college shows that are nice. If you like to go to the theater on the cheap, you can see some performances there. And then if you go further north to uh, 175th, you've got the Shoreline Library, which is amazing. I used to go there all the time. They have a relatively new building and that's a lot of fun to visit. They have a great kids section. You can check out a lot of things online. Um, hang out and use the computers, reference. Uh, anyway, not enough parking, but other than that, it's a great library. 175th also has one of our freeway exits. And then if you go north of that to 185th, that's about 185th in Aurora is where the Costco is and the Home Depot that I mentioned before, a bigger shopping center area. And um, that Costco is actually one of the busiest and most profitable Costco's in the state. So uh, that's been a huge success and brings a lot of traffic to that area that I don't know, you probably know all about Costco, so I won't talk about how much you can get, you know, samples <laughs> and all of the garden center plants are so affordable. Anyway, we all have our things we love at Costco, right? But um, so if you go west from there, about 185th, you'll get into a part of shoreline that is adjacent to the salt water. It's called Richmond Beach. There's a beautiful park out there where you can uh, go down and they have, what are they called, like wildlife interpreters, oceanographers, people from the aquarium who at certain times of the year, like in the summer at low tide, every couple of weeks they'll schedule some sort of a wildlife walk and the little kids can come out and find crabs and sea urchins and then they'll tell you, oh, you know, this is the octopus and that's endangered and we don't usually find these or whatever it is. They'll kind of tell you about it and help you learn to identify and appreciate the different sea life here uh, that we have on the coast, right? Because it's ocean water, so that's really cool. And it's so accessible, you know, it's, I don't even live in Shoreline. It's probably 10 or 15 minutes from my house. So uh, that's really nice. And then the Richmond Beach area in general is uh, considered sort of a prestigious part of Shoreline to live in. We actually have a gated community called the Highlands, which is a, a luxury community, I would say, with a lot of properties in the woods, larger properties, estate type homes, uh, larger lots, and some with waterfront or water views. There's also another kind of similar, but not gated luxury community called Innis Arden, which is uh, along the shoreline area as well and they have a lot of great views out to the water they have a pool and a tennis club there's a homeowners association involved uh, but those are some of the nice luxury communities in shoreline and then there's the rest of us in our just million dollar homes <laughs> maybe if you're up to like you know one and a half million you're kind of crossing over into the luxury price point but the median home prices in Shoreline now are about 750, 800,000, and that includes like condos and smaller residences. Uh, you know, a lot of those $800,000 homes are going to be like 2,000 square foot split levels. So I hesitate to call them luxury, but that is kind of the price point here, and that's also what you should expect if you decide to move to the area. Uh, as far as new construction, one of the things that's happening in Shoreline is that we have the light rail coming through. This is our elevated train system that's going from SeaTac Airport in the south to downtown Seattle. Uh, it's currently built out to Northgate Mall, which is south in the city of Seattle at about 110. So we're going to have a stop in Shoreline at 185th. And whenever they bring in a light rail like this, 
the stop is they want a lot of people to live within a walking distance of this um, bus stop or train stop. So all around this area, they have changed the zoning to be higher density, which means now we're seeing more apartment buildings, townhomes. Uh, we're trying to squeeze more people into these areas so that we can have a critical mass there to walk to these light rail stops. Uh, what else do we have? There's a great store called the Central Market. It's a grocery store. It's kind of like a Trader Joe's, but it's awfully big. And my husband calls it the party store. <laughs> That's where he goes to get things like fancy coffee, fancy wine, um, just treats and unusual foods for parties. They have sushi there. Uh, they have these cool like cake decorations. You could buy a gingerbread house in the shape of a house with a just sold sign on it. And that would be, I always thought, like a cool realtor gift that I should give someone if they close their house in Christmas time. Uh, they make sandwiches. They sometimes are making uh, tortillas and other things like live with a machine. They have all these natural products like machines that grind up uh, peanuts for peanut butter, almonds for almond butter. They have homemade soaps and lotions. And uh, one of the things I love is taking the kids there to the fish tanks right in the seafood section. They have a lot of live shellfish. So they have live crabs, live lobsters, live oysters, live clams, and they're all in the tanks. And sometimes they're like trying to climb and get out. So uh, the kids get a real kick out of that. Let me tell you. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know, before I was a real estate, well actually in between being a real estate agent, I got my license, I had my kids, and I uh, kept working after I was a stay-at-home mom with them for a while. And so I really mastered the art of taking a long time doing the errands and finding really fun places to go, like the library where they would have story times to amuse the kids, and that was much better to be out of the house doing a lot of things slowly rather than just like sitting at home with them all day and having them circle the living room, climbing on the furniture, jumping and screaming, right? So I don't know. I don't know what your kids are like, but <laughs> it's hard to be in a dark, cloudy, you know, at home, trapped in your living room type of experience for all that long, every day, all winter for years, right? So we have all of our coping mechanisms. Um, so Central Market, we have parks. Uh, Hamlin Park is a good one. It's very woodsy and forested. You can walk around on these trails and it backs up to Shoreline High School and Kellogg Middle School. So when I was going to school there, these are the, like the trails where I would run cross country. A lot of people take their dogs there and secretly let them off leash, which it doesn't seem to be overly enforced. There's also some baseball fields and some toys and jungle gyms for people to jump around on. There are uh, like picnic shelters. You can have a little fire. Our Cub Scout troop would come here to learn about making fires and that type of thing. So Hamlin Park is fun, but it's dark and woodsy. The park that I really enjoy going to is called Paramount Park. I think on the map it's called Paramount School Park or something. But this one is totally wide open. It's toward the top of a hill and it's very sunny. And it's basically like a huge field, but it's very sunny. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my sister and I and another friend of ours used to meet there every morning or like three days a week or something to go on a walk and they have this kind of zigzaggy walking curly you know walking track around it and for a while the city of Shoreline was sponsoring these events so um, like all through the summer you could track how many laps you walked and then report that on to the Shoreline website and uh, they would See who walked the most and then they would give you a prize so i don't know if nobody else was doing it but us and my uncle but one year the three of us won the prize and we all got t-shirts and then another year my uncle won the prize he used to live close to paramount park and um, he got like a crossfit membership for a month or something so he gave that to me which was really nice of him so the shoreline parks department I would say is fairly active. In addition to this park, it does have a playground thing and it has a cool like skateboard park. So if you're a cool boarder, which I'm not, <laughs> you can skateboard there. If you're not a cool boarder, but you're an awesome little kid, you can put on your helmet and get your scooter, your Razor scooter, and you can go around on there. So uh, that's a big attraction. On the back of Hamlin Park, I know I said a lot of dogs are off leash. 
which they are, but um, there's also an official off-leash dog park, which is uh, kind of not as an attractive location. It's kind of like in a parking lot area, but it's a big area for dogs to run around off-leash in a sanctioned setting. So that's available too. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. I was gonna talk about um, the Shoreline Outdoor. I was gonna talk about all the, the events that are sponsored by the city of Shoreline, which has, I think, a very robust community building push. So one of these is um, at Cromwell Park, which is by the Shoreline Courthouse. They have some beautiful baseball fields and wetlands and uh, playgrounds and kind of an outdoor gazebo with this big lawn. So oftentimes in the summer, I would say like every evening, once a week in the summer, they will have a band come and play. Usually it's a local band. It might be like the Navy band or something like that, different genres of music. And they'll sit on the stage and play like a two hour concert. And so people can come bring their kids. The kids dance around on the grass. People have picnics. And uh, so that's been something that's really fun. And they also have a more a similar one during the summer at lunch times, which are occasionally, you know, more oriented towards kids music and attracting children and their parents. So that's been a really nice thing about Shoreline. They also have um, outdoor theater. So in the summer, they'll have like live plays that they put on a couple times. They'll have uh, movie nights where they get the big screen and you can come watch a movie. It's pretty late at night because it doesn't get dark here in the summer until like nine o'clock. So just imagine that the movie would have to start at 8.30 or nine. <laughs> If you're trying to bring your kids, like I, my kids don't do well if I keep them up late. So uh, we haven't done that, but I, I've seen the flyers. I know it's available. There are lots of summer camps put on through the rec center. There's a public pool, although they might have just closed that. I think they're trying to build another pool. Uh, there's a, a artificial turf track and field. That's where I used to go jogging with my dad when I was getting in shape for cross country uh, every every morning at like eight o'clock we would go jog at the track during the summer or after school and it's all weather track so you're not in puddles and getting wet like you are in a lot of other places you could be running in seattle <laughs> um they have a, a gym i played basketball there you know all sorts of things and the, the shoreline center kind of this uh, big rec center facility they have a senior center there they have like a holiday bazaar where they sell christmas ornaments and crafts and gifts uh, in December. So that's kind of a hub of offices and Shoreline city owned property that uh, hosts a variety of these community outreach types of, of activities. A lot of people wonder about the schools. Shoreline schools are thought to be very good. Uh, at least when I was growing up, that was always how they were thought of. I think there, when I look at the greatschools.org, there's their scores are somewhat lower than I would have thought. I think it's seven, six, you know, that kind of a range. So uh, they do have AP classes, they have special needs classes, they have probably about 2,000 students at the high school. They've just remodeled all of the buildings. Uh, what else was I gonna say? They have like cheer, hip hop classes, chess club, you know, football, baseball, all the sports. So the schools, I think, overall are very well funded. The buildings are excellent. They just remodeled the high school, Shorecrest and Shoreline are new facilities. They just remodeled the middle schools. Uh, a lot of the elementary schools are, you know, like I went to Brookside 40 years ago and now it's a different building altogether. But um, so it has been remodeled in the last 40 years, but maybe that took place, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago now. I don't know how old I am. <laughs> it's been a while, but they are not like these horribly old, broken down buildings. And I think the buildings that they have remodeled were actually perfectly adequate before. So they do put money back into the schools and um, you know, the results maybe are a little bit of a mixed bag, but they are at least putting your tax dollars to work in a visible way there with very nice facilities and a lot of different programs. The people in Shoreline, I would say are a lot of families live here because of the school districts in the proximity to Seattle. A lot of people here are commuting into the city in order to, uh, you know, they hop on I-5, they drive downtown, it's a half an hour or so. It's rush hour, you know, it's maybe 45 minutes depending on what time of day 
you're leaving and whether you're taking the bus, but we have very good access to downtown Seattle and we have a lot of one and two parent working families in this area. So the, the kids programs are pretty extensive and pretty high quality, but it's not, it doesn't have a feeling of being especially posh. Uh, you know, you will meet lots of people who work at Amazon if you take your kids to the park. There's a big family of 70,000 of us who uh, have people working at Amazon. Um, you'll see a lot of Teslas when you're driving around. So, I mean, there's definitely money in the area, but it's a, a mixed bag as far as the people. Like my parents, I look outside, I see their house. They've lived here since the 1970s. And a lot of people who have, who have rooted here, I'm selling a house next week. That the lady has lived in you know for 30 or 40 years same thing you know move to the area have kids raise them up and just stay in the house so there are a lot of people like that and they may or may not have had like the money to build on or improve their house over time so we even will see like some older and dilapidated homes in the shoreline area but at the same time you know the house next door might be selling for a million dollars and so the new family who comes in is potentially at a very different like socioeconomic strata from the person that bought the house for $40,000 30 years ago, right? So just to be aware of that dynamic, it's not like a uniform swath of new construction that everybody bought, to, you know, in the last five years and they're all at the same price point and the same point in life. There's a lot of diversity in our community. And for the most part, I think people really embrace that. There's not a big sense of judginess or you know we all recommend recognize that we're all different and diverse and and it's okay with that but at the same time if you're the type of person that likes to see cookie cutter houses where everyone's lawn is green and mowed you may not get that here there might be the old guy in the overgrown lawn who is not able to like take care of and update his home next to these other like nicer ones so kind of in this area you get what you get you pay the price to come in, cost of entry, and then um, you know you help your neighbors out if you can. But you just recognize that you know what you see is what you get. There's there's sort of a diversity in um, the appearance of the homes, <laughs> the upkeep of the homes. Overall, I would say people in Shoreline love their dogs. They love their yards and gardening. There's a lot of gardening here, and if you don't have enough space for sun. <laughs> You might have a shady lot uh, if you don't have the right spot for a garden in your house they're actually like community gardens where you can go and rent from the city for one year a garden plot in a park or something so you can go have that experience of planting seeds in the ground and having things grow and it's nice and manageable water is included you can have you know meet other gardeners out there uh, and the only problem is it's like in public so if you have uh, people who really want to eat your crops, they could steal something from you, but I don't know how many like carrot thieves there really are on the prowl <laughs> shoreline. <laughs> Maybe some of your cherry tomatoes will go. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta stay on top of those things. But overall, I would say shoreline is a great community, uh, friendly, lots of resources, great commute into Seattle, a little bit longer commute into Bellevue. It's not the perfect place for getting into Bellevue, but you can get there by going over the top of the lake and onto 405 or south on I-5 and across 520, which is now a toll bridge. So you do have some options. You can certainly access both sides, but it's best for people who are working in Seattle. So if you have any other questions about Shoreline, put them in the comments below. If you don't, make sure you check out my next video. If you're thinking about moving to Seattle and need help buying or selling a house, please give me a call, text, smoke signals, carrier pigeon, whatever you want. Uh, I'm here to help you. My name again is Emily Cressy and I hope you have an awesome day.